John Carpenter's The Thing was initially a commercial and critical failure upon its release in 1982. Despite this, the movie garnered a cult following over the years and is now considered a staple of the horror genre. Since The Thing is my favorite horror movie, I wanted to do something special with it. Rather than analyzing a specific character or the meaning behind the film, I wanted to see if I could determine how and when each group member gets infected. There will obviously be some spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen the movie, definitely watch it before continuing this video. On a side note, I will be covering four members of the group specifically. While Bennings and Windows both get infected in the movie, I only briefly mention them as we see exactly when and how they get infected. If I was an imitation, a perfect imitation, how would you know if it was really me? Figuring out the order the group became infected in was pretty challenging. Numerous theories point to Palmer being the first victim, but after closely examining the film, I feel Norris is most likely patient zero for a few reasons. We can reasonably assume that the first victim was infected by the dog from the Norwegian camp. Before the dog thing is set ablaze, it infects an unknown crew member, with the only clue to their identity being a silhouette. This silhouette resembles both Norris and Palmer, making it difficult to tell who it is. However, if you look closely, the person's shirt collar is slightly raised in the back. If you recall, Norris wears a collared shirt underneath a sweater for the entirety of the movie, resulting in a near identical look. Soon after this scene, Palmer shares a joint with Childs. Later in the movie, it's said that a single cell of the thing is able to take over an entire organism. If Palmer was the first to be infected, then Childs would have gotten infected at that moment. But later he passes the blood test. Even if this was a simple mistake, when comparing the background elements of this room to the one in the silhouette scene, they don't match. You can see the wall the silhouette is on is completely blank, whereas the wall behind Childs is covered in papers. Finally, the way Norris dies is another integral clue in proving he was the first to be infected. Norris's heart attack suggests he was being taken over slowly by the thing, and when you think about it, this makes complete sense. This would help explain why Norris is the only infected crew member we see in pain. Norris feels his body being taken over, but he isn't completely assimilated until after he dies. Norris is also the only crew member to die before revealing himself as the thing. As stated earlier, it only takes one cell from the thing to take over an entire organism. It's highly possible that the infected dog simply transferred a few saliva cells to Norris and left him afterwards. Moving on, Palmer is the next crew member to be infected. Before I go any further though, I would like to determine how Palmer was infected. There's a 15 minute window of time where the infection would have had to occur. This ranges from the scene where Palmer and Child share a joint, to the scene where Nalls find shredded long johns in the kitchen trash. Best of moods, I don't know what you compare. disrespectful man been tossing his dirty drawers in the kitchen trash can, huh? But now I want my kitchen clean, all right? Germ free. The Long Johns have to be Palmer's, as no other group member is infected at this time, and we've already determined Norris is being assimilated slowly. We know that Palmer couldn't have been infected by the dog, as it's killed directly after they share a joint. I feel like I've said joint way too much in this video. Anyways, if Norris was being taken over slowly, then he wouldn't actively be trying to infect others. While Norris could have accidentally infected Palmer, this isn't likely as several other crew members come into close contact with him and are not infected. This leaves only one possibility. Palmer must have been infected by the remains found at the Norwegian camp. To prove my point, Bennings meets his demise in this exact way. When Windows first enters the room, he sees Bennings' clothes which are torn and covered in blood, just like the clothes Nalls found. The only difference is, Palmer had enough time to hide the evidence. Now that we know how Palmer was infected, let's jump back into the timeline. After Windows sees Bennings becoming infected, he drops Gary's set of keys. Later in the movie, the blood safe is unlocked, tampered with, and then locked again. Wait a minute, was this broken into? No, the lock is undamaged. Somebody opened it, closed it, and then locked it. With Norris not being fully assimilated, and no other infected crew member within the building, Palmer is the only one who could have stolen the keys. In fact, out of everyone who gets infected, Palmer seems to do most of the heavy lifting. Not only does he steal the keys, he raises the group's paranoia. When do you think it got to him? I don't know. Could have been any time, anywhere. Right, you said guys were missing, and Windows, where were you? Hey, Palmer, I told you to shut up.
effectively kills Windows and Fuchs, and he infects Blair. Similar to Palmer, there's a narrow window of time where Blair would have had to be infected. This ranges from when Blair first gets locked in the tool shed to Fuchs' disappearance. When Fuchs goes missing, McCready, Windows, and Nalls go outside to look for him and find that someone's been in McCready's shack. Where are we going? Up to my shack. What the hell for? Because when I left yesterday, I turned the lights off. What's more, McCready also goes to the tool shed while searching for Fuchs, and Blair mentions. Funny things. I hear funny things out here. This implies that the thing has been active both inside and outside the camp. After finding Fuchs, the remaining crew members stay inside the camp until after the blood test is finished. Following this, McCready, Gary, and Nalls go to the tool shed to give Blair the same test, only to find that he's missing. Mac, the door's open! Considering all of this, Blair's infection likely occurred while Fuchs went missing. McCready states that the lights were out in there for an hour, any one of us could have gotten to him. This would have given plenty of time for the thing to kill Fuchs, break into McCready's shack, and infect Blair. This would also mean that Blair was already infected while begging McCready to let him back inside. Blair doesn't do as much damage as Palmer, but he does ultimately kill Gary and Nalls. When McCready finally defeats the Blair thing, we expect him to be the lone survivor, until... You the only one who made it? Not the only one. Did you kill it? Where were you, Charles? The final scene has been a subject of debate ever since the movie first released. After the blood test, McCready, Gary, and Nalls go to the tool shed to test Blair's blood, while Childs remains at the camp keeping watch. As the three men search for Blair, Nalls notices something unusual. Hey, you guys, come here. Come here. I think I saw Charles outside the main entrance of the camp. Immediately after this, the lights go out, and McCready says, I got back inside and blew the generator. When McCready asks Childs where he was at the end of the movie, Childs replies, I thought I saw Blair. I went out after him. I got lost in the storm. Childs' statement contradicts this sequence of events. The lights go out after Childs runs outside the camp, meaning Blair was still inside when Childs ran outside. McCready seems to realize this also, smiling suspiciously at Childs after he says this. Blair likely infected Childs when he was alone waiting until the other three separated from him. It needs to be alone and in close proximity with the life form to be absorbed. The chameleon strikes in the dark. So is Blair. Moreover, there are several other clues that indicate Childs may be the thing. As soon as Childs takes a drink from the bottle, the main theme begins playing. Music is an essential part of every horror movie, as it can help shift and emphasize the tone of a scene. The use of the main theme adds to the uneasiness and paranoia, possibly to inform the audience that Childs is the thing. Also noteworthy, McCready laughs right after Childs drinks from the bottle. McCready tested Childs here, and he ultimately failed. Earlier in the movie, Fuchs states, If a small particle of this thing is enough to take over an entire organism, then everyone should prepare their own meals, and I suggest we only eat out of cans. McCready laughs because Childs isn't afraid of being infected by him, indicating he already is infected. Throughout the movie, Childs is one of the most cautious crew members. Childs! What if we're wrong about him? Why then we're wrong? It seems unlikely that he would make such a reckless decision. Some believe McCready laughs because the bottle is filled with gasoline rather than alcohol, known as the Molotov cocktail theory, but this is a bit of a reach. After all, the thing is able to replicate any organism perfectly. Even if the thing doesn't know the difference between alcohol and gas, its new human form would be able to tell. Additionally, before Childs arrives, McCready almost drinks from the bottle. Why would he drink from it if it was filled with gasoline? Finally, the last thing we see before the movie cuts to a wide shot is McCready glancing suspiciously at Childs. 
If nothing else, this shows McCready is still unsure of Childs. Altogether, the combination of Childs' contradictory story, the music cue, Childs' carelessness, and McCready's suspicious glare point to Childs being the Thing rather than human. Overall, The Thing is one of the greatest horror movies of all time. With superb acting and direction, grotesque special effects, and a chilling score, The Thing is a timeless piece of horror history. Its main themes of trust, isolation, and paranoia still remain relevant in our society, making it a must-watch for everyone. And let's not forget who else makes this movie so great.